So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to April and the kickoff of our second quarter, Managing Mondays with our new excellent partners, ADP. We have a full quarter of a program already planned out for you. So go ahead, mark your calendar, first Monday, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time. And today we're going to be looking at employer-based tax credits. So you know what you're going to do. Keep your money in your pocket, in your business, once you know how to use these tax credits to your benefit. So I'm DR Small. I'm the president and CEO. I'm the founder and CEO for the Veteran Women's Enterprise Center. And right now, I want to take you to our website so you know how to find us. So if you're new here, this is how you find us at veteranwomensec.org. Just a couple of quick points. We're ADA compliant. So any of our veterans who have issues, you can manipulate this platform so that it works best for you. Change the colors, increase the size of the fonts, whatever you need to do to make this work for you. Also, you guys can see we have our little bod here. So you can send us a text or ask us to give you a phone call. Please be patient with us. We are a very small team. So someone may not get back to you immediately, but we do get back to everyone. Last but not least, down at the bottom, you see our book of tour info, a mentor session, which means 24 seven. You can come onto our platform and if you need to connect with us, you can book a date and time that works for you. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see our calendar of events. If you click here, you'll be able to see what events are coming up next. And then if you click to that event, it's going to take you to our calendar. So here we have Managing Monday that we're going to be doing today. If you want a broader look at the calendar to see everything that's going on, just hit the month. And here we have April. So go ahead and mark your calendars. Next week is Technology Tuesday. We have a surprise guest. I don't think you're going to want to miss it. Also, open call for the third annual Winman Veteran Pitch Competition. It's open. Go ahead, get registered. Just go straight to Zoom. That pitch competition, this is our third year, and it's all about highlighting, showcasing the ideas and the multi-million dollar businesses that veteran women across the state of Texas own, run, or want to get going. So whether you're in Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Waco, wherever you are, you're invited to get connected. So spread the word. Also join our partners for a Texas All Call. Ladies, this is a great opportunity to talk about your challenges. We pitch our businesses doing the All Call. You're able to talk about challenges. You get advice or advice from experts and from your colleagues. You know, just because you're an expert doesn't mean you know everything. Sometimes there's somebody out there that's going through exactly what you're going through and they have the answer to your question. But if you don't ever put that question out there, you'll never know. Also join us at the end of the month. We'll be with the Women Veteran Alliance for their Wednesday webinar on April 27th. And don't miss our trending Thursdays, BW Connect. So here, we're going to have Alade Love Hawkins. She works in trucking. And I can tell you, we've had seven women reach out to us for mentoring opportunities, as well as they either have a trucking company or they want to start a trucking company. So women are moving into transportation. And Lottie's going to talk to us about what's happening in that industry and how you and I can get connected. Last but not least, registration is also open for our, um, sorry about that. Registration is also open for our, um, ah, I'm not sure what happened there. But registration is also open for our Financial First Weekend Bootcamp. That is a part of the SBAs. Navigator program. If you guys remember, only 51 organizations across the United States was picked, and we were picked along with the deck to our hub and where it spoke. And that program will be available to you in May. So get registered now. Only 15 slots are available, and the participants 
will be able to pitch for a $500 to a $1,000 matching grant for a secure line of credit or a secure business credit card. So make sure that you get connected. So we don't want to take up any more of your time for Managing Monday, but we want to make sure you know how to get and stay connected. So visit our website. That's the best way to get connected. Sign up to follow us on social media. We push out everything there. And that way, you'll know everything that's happening across our platforms. So now, Melanie, I'm going to let you introduce yourself as well as your partner, if your partner is online from ADT. So we're going to turn this over to Melanie with ADT. ADP, ADP. Why am I saying T? <laughs> You're good. Now, Don't I, worry. I know she was looking at me strange. I'm like, what am I saying wrong? Not P, but P. All right, ladies. Yes, no worries. Thank you very much, Ms. VR. So excited to be on the call today. Um, I'm Melanie Mingo, so I'm with ADP. I've been at ADP for nine years, so working with businesses of all sizes, but um, specifically small businesses. And so really helping those business owners manage all of the complexities of running a business, doing whatever it is that they're in business for, but all of the back-end things um, from an operational standpoint that can sometimes get in your way. So we're excited to be par partnering up with you guys and to bring a lot of information that can hopefully help, like Ms. VR said, keep extra money in your pocket. So um, I will get started here in a second. I have a couple of my partners. Um, I'm going to be speaking today, but one of my partners, Christiana, is actually probably who you will be interacting with even more so, especially if you do decide to um, evaluate ADP. We have some great partnership opportunities for you guys and for your businesses. And then also have one of our other partners, uh, Beth, on the line as well, who's going to go and take a little bit deeper dive into R&D tax credit specifically here in a minute. So I will share my screen and we will get started here. And while Melody is sharing her screen, let me just do a little bit of housekeeping again for those of you who may have jumped on late. Um, we do have this as a meeting, but please do not interrupt the speaker. If you have a burning question, go ahead and put that in chat so you can remember it. But we will do questions and answers toward the end of the segment. So please let the presenter finish. If something pops up and you just, oh, I have to find out more about this, put it in chat. We're gonna give time at the end for all of our questions and answers. So go ahead, Melody, and take it away. All right, um, so here is me and my picture there and Christiana, and you'll see uh, Beth pop up here in a second here, but we will go ahead and get started. So what is WOTC? So WOTC or Work Opportunity Tax Credits is a hiring incentive where employers that hire people from different groups can actually get um, and incentivized for that because you're really helping some of those groups get over some of those barriers to entry. And so it's really to help those qualified workers move from those kind of economic dependencies and other groups um, and be more self-sufficient and earn steady income. And so they actually do give money back to those businesses that are hiring people that are in those groups. So there's about a billion dollars in different types of credits that are given to businesses every single year um, based upon where those employees fall. So on the left, you can kind of see there's 200,000 veterans that enter into the workplace each year, 47 million Americans that receive food stamps, 1.5 billion in tax credits um, that are complained, claimed by employers every year, um, and then $5 billion dollars in tax credits go unclaimed. So the goal of this conversation um, is for everyone sitting on this call today or watching it after the fact that is part of that $5 billion, how we can help you in getting some of that money, putting it back in your pocket, getting these other employees um, jobs, and then also being able to really use that money to put it back into um, your business and continue to create more job opportunity to go around. So there's different eligibility. Obviously, these employees must be employees of your business. They're new hires um, that are members of these targeted groups. So there is some paperwork that has to be done on the back end. So there's a form called the 8850 that has to be filled out. And then those employees have to work a minimum of 120 hours. So 
Um, usually those those qualifications, if you know you're hiring full time workers, are pretty easy to to meet when it comes to WOTC credits. But um, it's a conversation that we can go more in depth with with any business to see kind of hey, what does that look like? Who are these employees that you currently have hired and looking to hire? So there is up to ninety six hundred dollars per certified employee for the first year of employment only. Um, Twenty five percent in of employees earning after one hundred and twenty hours and then 40% earning after um, that 400 hours of employment. So you can kind of see here the, the information from what, it, you know, the buckets that it falls in from being able to get access to these work opportunity tax credits. There's a lot of other tax credits out there. So like I said, R&D is the one we're getting ready to go into here in a minute, but um, just like a lot of you guys got PPP loans, potentially, there's an ERTC, an employee retention tax credit. So lots of money out there um, in order to take advantage of all of these. There is some back end work. So we're trying to really help you identify one if you are able to get the credit, but also what it is that you need to do to be able to have access. So when it comes to different tax credits, so there's a single page questionnaire. And so we're able to kind of help your business fill out that questionnaire. You can kind of see if they fall in any of these groups that you see at the bottom. So long-term family assistance, um, veteran groups, if they get supplementary income, um, food stamps, qualified, you know, ex-felon, all of these different areas. So as part of the sheet that they fill out, you'll know if they fall into one of those buckets. And then that helps us do kind of the, the paperwork after the fact. So you can kind of see here what the screening looks like, um, really simple. So like I said, those employees would fill out this information um, and it allows ADP to really do the back end paperwork that gets turned in to access the credit. Um, and then the WASI screening, you can kind of see here, um, just kind of how the process goes along in ADP system. And then I'll skip forward from here, um, obtaining the credit report. So the biggest thing is after you hired this person and you do all of the work to kind of get the information and all of that, in order to get the credit, you do have to turn in all of the correct reporting. So the way that the system is set up is within our system, you go into reports um, in tax and banking and you have that WASI credit report that's already filled out from ADP. So as you're hiring each employee, do they qualify? getting the proper paperwork filled out. ADP is helping to create those reports that then get turned in um, for you to get that credit money back. Um, so you can kind of see here kind of how ADP plays into this. So obviously as you're hiring, we're going to help you do that screening workflow, everyone all the way through, and then really helping with the intelligent platform that's gonna look at the credit, which ones do you qualify for and put the reports together so you can make sure to get all of that money back. So I wanted to have um, Beth go through R&D specifically with research and development tax credit. So um, it's another great way, aside from just hiring certain employees that fall in these buckets, it's another great way that you as a business owner can take a look at what are you doing as a business? Are you making strides in research and development that would qualify to get some additional money back here? So I am going to pass it over to Beth and I will let you go through um, your slides and share with everyone how they can get some money on R&D. Perfect. Thank you, Melanie. And thanks for having us, everyone. Good afternoon. I have to apologize for my background. I have construction people in my house, so I'm relegated to the mudroom today. So <laughs> coats and all. But uh, we would love to talk to you about some of the different tax credits. And Melanie, if you've got my screen up, um, I am not, there we go. Thanks so much. I'll let you do the, the, uh, the screenshots. So my name is Beth Solaro. I've been with ADP for 29 years on the payroll side of it for a lot of that. Uh, but th these days I am on the uh, tax credit side of the house, specifically with R&D tax credits. And so that's really what we're gonna talk about today, which is one of the most underutilized tax credits uh, for business owners these days. So just a little bit, uh, probably something you didn't know, there are over 3,000 tax credits between federal, state, and local tax credits and incentives. Um, to Melanie's point, WOTC being a big one of those. 
And uh, here in Texas, we have not only federal, but we do have some state tax credits. So these are all great things to keep in mind as you're thinking about what you're doing with your business, as you're consulting with your CPAs. Um, ADP has over 4,000 clients nationally on our tax credit side of the house uh, for R&D and a 98% retention rate. And so uh, we uh, keep our clients happy and, and continue to find tax credits for them. And uh, one kind of one boasting point that we like is, uh, I know this is a 2019 stat, it's almost double for uh, last year, but we do uh, find people billions of dollars in tax credits. And I kind of liken tax credits to uh, college scholarships. You know, they're, they're out there, but if people don't know about them or they don't go after them, then that money is sending everybody everywhere else except benefiting your business. So next screen, please. So just a little bit uh, to, uh, on ADP's tax credit side of the house, we actually have now over 300 tax professionals and those are made up of engineers, law attorneys, uh, tax law attorneys, software developers, economists. Um, and so really our goal is on the tax credit side to make sure that you're well taken care of from all aspects with people that really uh, know what they're doing in, in, that, uh, in that arena. And our tax credits division has been around for over 40 years. We work with businesses all shapes and sizes. Next screen, please. So a little bit about what we'll go into today around R&D tax credits, our uh, federal R&D tax credits, give you some examples of some of the industries that we find most common for research and development tax credits, and then uh, give, you, give you a little bit of an idea of how the flow of you know, going from an initial conversation to an actual study goes. Next slide, please. So for those of you that aren't familiar, the R&D tax credit was actually established in 1981. It's been around for a long time, and it was put in place to incentivize businesses to keep their research and development activities here in the United States. And so businesses are uh, able to uh, look at some of the things that they're doing. Um, if they're if they're doing, you know, uh, common industries or manufacturing, bio and life sciences, software development. That's not limited to that, but that's where we find a lot of R and D. And the nice part about this tax credit is very fluid. We actually can look three years back. We can look at the current year, and any unused credits from those years can actually carry forward for 20 years. And depending on where you are in your business life cycle, there are two ways that you can monetize or get your money back on that credit. One is if you're profitable or taxable, then you actually can get that money back off of your corporate tax return. And the other way to do that is if you are in what the IRS considers a startup mode, that means that you are less than five years of earning your first dollar of gross receipts and that you are bringing in less than five million per year in gross receipts. And if that's the case, then the IRS actually will allow you to take the credit up to $250,000 a year off of the employer side of the, um, of the payroll taxes of your FICA. Next slide, please. So what goes into a, to a research and development tax credit? So there, there is a formula and the, the, what the IRS lets us look at are box one W2 wages of individuals that are performing, supervising or, or supporting research and development activities. They let us look at contractor expenses. As long as those contractors are in the United States, we, uh, for manufacturing companies, can look at tangible, non-capitalized raw materials that are used during the research and development process. And if you're a software development company, we can, we can look at some of the cloud computing costs that were used for software and development 
related to research and development. And so that calculation, the IRS kind of lets us take when we bundle all that together, about six to 8% of that for the actual credit. So these are some common reasons that, you know, sometimes businesses will say, oh, we're doing a lot of research and development, but we're an S corp or we're not profitable. Uh, or they're worried that maybe this would trigger an audit um, or that it's gonna take an enormous amount of time to go through a process to figure out a tax credit. But you know what? Not necessarily so. Next slide, please. So when we're looking at research and development tax credits, uh, the IRS does make you meet a four-part test. And without belaboring this too much, and of course, we're always, we're always happy to visit with you on one-offs, but the IRS does require that you meet each of, these, each of these tests, the first one being permitted purpose. And that kind of just means that the activity, the research and development activity that you are doing um, needs to be for a product, a process, a software, for instance, if you're building a software, developing a software or creating an app, um, some type of a formula, um, an invention, and so it, it does have to have some type of process that when you started out, you, you knew you could get there, you just weren't quite sure how. The second test goes into the fact that it, it has to follow some type of hard science. So engineering, computer sciences, chemistry, some of the hard sciences that uh, are, are uh, working with that research and development. And then elimination of uncertainty. Um, you, and, and by the way, you don't have to hit all of these bullet points underneath, you just have to hit one. And so under elimination of uncertainty, it just kind of means that the activity that you were doing needs to have some type of design or methodology that, again, when you started out, you weren't quite sure how you were gonna get there, which means, uh, kind of bleeding into the to the fourth uh, test of process ex of experimentation that you had to get there by some type of trial and error, modeling, conceptualization. If you failed, that's actually okay. It just means you've pivoted and you're trying something else. And that is the essence of research and development. Beth, can I ask you a um, quick question? Because I think it'd be great for an example. So say we have a small business owner who makes a, um, a uh, chemical-free uh, hair product or skin product, would their development of that product fall into any of this? Absolutely, that's a fantastic question and thanks for asking. Uh, so that, you know, with, if they are going through the process of working through, you know, the chemical process and what worked and what didn't and, you know, um, that type of thing, that is research and development. Now, the important part, which we kind of get into when we do our, our initial uh, conversation with somebody is who owns the IP rights, the intellectual property rights to that, right? So um, as long as the company owns a portion of the intellectual property rights to what they're developing, right? Um, then, then we usually have a pretty good shot there. And so the, the big question I always tell people to ask, and it's really kind of simple, it kind of puts it in a nutshell, is, is the business inventing, developing, or improving a product or a process? And, and when I say improving, you don't have to be doing the hair care product for the first time. That may have been your initial thing, but you may continue throughout the years to figure out how to improve that product um, throughout the Beth, course of time. Yes. That's, that's a good point. So say someone had already started their business and of course they didn't know anything about these R&D tax credits. So they missed out on that initial development, but they need to, like you said, fix some products. Some things aren't working the way they want them to and they're making improvements. Is there a certain amount of money they need to spend or, or does it just, you know, if they spent that on it, up to how much can they get or do they have a bottom line or a minimum? Because if you have well, a small business and you're starting out, you may have only spent a small amount of money, but every little bit counts, right? 
Every little bit counts. Then you are absolutely right. And and where these, you know, I'll tell you, it's one of those questions that it kind of varies from business to business on what businesses spend, you know, again, kind of a couple slides back where we went through what the IRS lets us look at, which are W-2 wages, which usually make up the bulk of the credit. Um, you know, if they have any raw materials in, in what they were doing. And sometimes businesses don't have a lot of money that they spend in raw materials, but they do have a lot of money that they've spent in R&D, or I'm sorry, in box one W-2 wages. So those are some of the things we look at. And I would strongly encourage that, you know, if people have questions, you know, holler at Melanie, she can connect you with me or holler at me and we can we can kind of kind of walk through things. Generally speaking, just a ballpark, when businesses have, um, if, if you have in qualified research expenditures, usually four or $500,000 or more, then the economics kind of work out to be able to take the credit, right? Um, but we can certainly look at that. And I've had businesses that had two employees where you know it's made a lot of sense and we well i'll show you some examples in a few minutes of um you know companies that really didn't have that many employees but they came in big with some of their uh research and development tax credits and remember we can look three years back so, so you're in question. that six digit figure for it to really make sense Maybe when you're in that six digit figure to really make sense with, for instance, your, you know, the combination of your box one W-2 wages, your contract, if you're using any contract labor individuals here in the United States, and if you're doing some type of manufacturing, um, any of your, your raw materials. But, you know, yeah, I'll tell you, we have conversations every day. Um, no is, is actually not a bad word in our vocabulary because sometimes we talk with people. I talked with someone last week and they said, you know, we're not quite there, but you know what? 2022 is going to be a banner year for us. And we're, we're going to, we're going to kind of get to a point where we have more expenses. And what our suggestion for them was fantastic. We're so excited. We got to have this initial conversation with you because now you've got the education, let's circle back around in December or January, see how 2022 played out and see at that time if it makes sense for you to take the credit. So we don't wanna pull somebody down a rabbit hole um, unnecessarily uh, through a process if it's not gonna really benefit them. Exactly, that's what I wanted to say. You know, We have that broad range of business owners that are below that million dollar mark. And then we have our multi-million dollar business owners. So we wanna make sure we kind of touch on this so where everybody can see where they fit in or if they don't fit in to a particular area. And so yeah. I just wanna clarify, if they're under that million dollars in revenue, they probably haven't produced enough R&D for it to make sense for them to try to qualify that. Is that correct or am I wrong? Well, actually, if they make under, remember, if they're under five million in revenue, so so their their qualified research expenditures need to be, you know, four or five hundred thousand dollars. So you could have an owner that is making a hundred thousand dollars a year, or maybe has three people, and collectively, maybe their collective box one W two wages are, let's say, four hundred thousand dollars. Then it, then it would make sense to to have a conversation. Where I think you're thinking is. With startups, if they have under five million in gross receipts and they're under five years old, they can certainly take advantage of the R&D tax credit. We just take that off of payroll taxes as opposed to a tax return. See, great, I wanted you to make that point because I'm sure there's some people on here. We have a broad range of members and I'm sure there's people that are in that startup or in that growth range that are thinking, oh, wow, this doesn't apply to me. But, you know, even startups have R&D. Absolutely. And I think you would be pleasantly surprised. We have conversations with people all the time and they'll say, well, gosh, I'm just a startup. And that's a great time to start, uh, start having this conversation, really. So. Okay, great, great. I just wanted to make that point. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Next slide, please, Melanie. So what industries and, and what things typically, uh, you know, count as research and development activities? So, you know, again, um, I would ask you to ask yourselves, you know, am, am I inventing, developing, or improving 
a product or, or a manufacturing process? And if the answer to that question is yes, if it's maybe a software, a software app, um, you know, I'll give you some examples of some things here in a minute, um, then you, you could have potential. And again, the best industries that we kind of see the, the fits in are software development, manufacturing, and the biotech and life science industries. Next slide, please. But again, not limited to. So we have found people that you know, are in the hair care industry and they're doing some pretty cool stuff. And so, you know, sometimes um, if they're inventing things, you you find research and development. So if you yeah, can- I'm gonna hit you up again. Sure. <laughs> this has crossed my mind. So what if I needed, what if a business owner needed to take like a, a quarter of a mil or a half a mil to develop some software that they're using for their business? How would that money that they use to develop that software how would that play into this tax credit or would it? It, it would, because remember we can use W-2 wages, we can, we can use raw materials. And if they're, if they're software, anything that's related to our to research and development, we can, if they're using, for instance, Microsoft Azure or AWS, some of those cloud computing costs, there are some there are some of those costs that that kind of bundle into this what we call qualified research expenditure or QREs, if you will. So yeah, that's a great thing to say because I know a number of ladies that are having software develop and they're doing different things along that line, and so they don't want to spend that money um, because they're like, oh, I can't pay this bill, but there may be a way for them to get some of that money back. And maybe so they so. need to have a strategy. Absolutely. And that, that all starts with a conversation. So we're happy to have those conversations. So can you click through a couple of those for me, Mel? Thank you. So here, here are some buzzwords for you. Maybe these will resonate with some of you guys, where if you're doing some type of an activity that is a prototype, or you're going after a patent, maybe you have a patent, you're making something cleaner, more efficient, faster, better, cheaper. These are all types of um, activities that could potentially qualify for research and development. Next slide, please. So let me give you a couple of industries and I won't read all of these to you, but in the if you're in the manufacturing industry, these are some ideas of some Act of some qualified research activities. So, um, you know, in manufacturing, if somebody is doing some tooling or some die casting or molding, or they're um, doing some fabrication of, of prototypes, that type of thing, then um, often these are activities that are indicative of there's some type of R&D going on here. Next slide, please. In the software development, and again, this is software development, not necessarily software IT, because remember, IT guys are kind of using everybody else's software, right? And those guys have the R&D. But software development, if you are doing some type of external software that is for sale or lease or licensed um, to outside third parties, and those most common we think of apps, right? Everybody's doing an app these days. Um, cloud-based applications, um, if they're producing some type of a new software um, or continuing to improve those things, right? Not necessarily for their own business, but for things that they're working on for their clients or the general public. Then those are some activities in the software arena. Next slide, please. And in the life sciences and biotech, a lot of people I think, think think of this industry kind of as pharmaceutical and pharmaceutical companies do that. But there are a lot of other companies out there that are kind of in some of these life sciences, biotech sciences that are really not pharmaceutical companies um, that are doing um, things that, you know, not only with formulations of, of drugs and that type of thing, but maybe new technologies in those industries to, you know, further telemedicine or robotics or artificial intelligence. So those are, those are some ideas there. Next slide, please. So here's an idea. This just kind of gives you an idea of some companies that 
um, I've talked to in the past and we have had some great success with. And as you see from some of these, you know, here's a company with eight employees that was a custom mold manufacturer and we found $260,000 worth of tax credits for them. Um, you know, there is one at the bottom, the, the software developer, they had 121 employees, but I've seen a lot companies with a lot less that are small businesses that we've still found three, uh, you know, upwards of $300,000 in tax credits. Um, so it really spans the globe. There was a company out of uh, Houston not long ago that uh, I worked with and they had uh, five employees and we found a half a million dollars in tax credits. So it's kind of across the board. It varies from business to business, but this just kind of gives you an idea. Again, there's some money out there to be had if you get the conversations going with, you know, the right people that, that know what to look for. Next slide, please. So how does it work? Um, so what we do at ADP is generally we will do a project scoping, meaning I'll have an initial 45 minute conversation with somebody to, you know, really kind of dive in a little bit, have them tell me about their business beyond what their website is, ask a few other questions that help me really to kind of assess, is there a potential for a research and development tax credit? And um, depending on information that you might have available, just kind of in general, you know, the optimal goal is maybe to give you a high level estimate at the end of that, that first 45 minute meeting. Um, and that just kind of gives us an idea of, is it worth pursuing this a little bit further and doing a full blown study? Or, hey, do we find $1,000 in tax credits and maybe we ought to just, you know, hang tight and reevaluate this again in December and January, see how the current year played out. So the next step is, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, you know, once we get the thumbs up, yes, I want to go forward with the study. We actually kind of set up a, um, uh, a kickoff call and a technical call to peel the layers of the onion back a little bit further, make sure we're not missing anything. Um, you know, I think part of the reason ADP has a 98% retention rate with research and development tax credits is largely due to the fact that we're a pretty conservative gr group of individuals and we're not gonna do anything to raise an eyebrow with the IRS. And so we do peel those layers of the onion back to make sure that what we send over to them is rock solid. And so um, at that point, once we've done, it takes us about four to six weeks to do the credit and the technical calls, it can run anywhere from an hour, hour and a half. Um, and then from there, we deliver the credit that you can in turn deliver to your CPA. And we are very CPA friendly. Um, they love talking to us about R&D tax credits and we keep them in the loop because at the end of the day, they're the guys that are gonna stick that on your corporate return. Um, you know, or, you know, we can, we can give you the figures if it, if it needs to go off of uh, uh, a payroll type of a thing. So um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the life cycle. And then ADP provides full audit support. So um, again, we're a pretty conservative bunch, but if the IRS would come back and say, they weren't sure they were gonna allow, you know, a, a particular line item. We would of course uh, be there to provide audit support at no, extra, to, at no extra charge. And we would actually, if they did in fact disallow a line item, we would actually refund that money uh, that we charged back to the client. Next slide, please. So pretty easy process really, doesn't take a ton of time. So here are some great examples of some of our clients and what they've said. The one at the top, AIM Institute, was actually a software, a software developer and they were actually thrilled that uh, they thought we were not only a pretty easy bunch of, of folks to work with, but they were thrilled that we were able to look back three years to help maximize their credit. Um, Evertree North America, they actually do plant-based adhesive solutions. They were headquartered out of the country and they were worried that maybe they wouldn't be able to take advantage of the tax credit. Well, they couldn't take advantage of what they were doing in France, but they sure could take advantage of what they could do here um, and got over $50,000 in tax credits um, for, here, for what they were doing here in the United States. Um, 
tele, uh, tessellation software, again, a software company that was just really thrilled that we took made the effort to, you know, visit with their CPA, invite their CPA onto some of the calls. Um, CPAs love being on our calls, by the way. And, um, you know, and, and a couple others as, as well. Um, we had a flight simulation company that um, they had had an R&D tax credit study in the past, but they weren't real confident with it. When they, when they joined ADP to have us start doing their tax credits, we looked back and actually found additional money for them that wasn't found in the past from the, the prior group they were with. And uh, then, then last, uh, Dirt Logic, which uh, was was really again just excited that ADP took, you know, looked at everything for them, not just current year, but we looked back. We were very thorough, um, you know, to to help them out. So just kind of some some happy client examples there. Next slide, please. So that being said, your path down R&D tax credit or research and development, um, you know, it's, I, I, th I think, you know, Melanie will probably bring this in home for, for all of us here, but, you know, I would highly encourage you to, to think about what you're doing. Um, you know, feel free to reach out. The, you know, the questions are, our freebies and uh, if, if we can help you find some things that are gonna put money back into your business, um, you know, that's, that's fantastic. It makes us happy. And I, I know you guys are excited about it too. So that being said, Mel, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Beth. I think you're absolutely right. It's one of those things sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So um, the biggest thing for us and what we like to do is just really have conversations with business owners. Hey, what are you doing now? What have you done in the past? Um, what are you looking to do in the future? And you know, how can we help? How can ADP play a role in you know streamlining what you're currently doing? Get some more money in your pocket for activities and you know inventions and um, advancements that you're already creating, um, and really you know partner to help make your business as successful as um, as possible and whatever your future goals are. So we really appreciate the time uh, today for this week's Managing Monday, um, and for VR for having us on the call and being able to share. So I will pass it back over to you, VR. Awesome. This was great. Let me come back going here. Uh, this was awesome, guys. So what I want to do is also ask some questions. I don't see any questions in the chat, but I want to pose some questions for the people who will come back and view this on our YouTube platform. And just reminding our attendees, uh, moving forward, we will no longer be streaming these Facebook Live, but we will be uploading them to our YouTube page. So you can go to our website, you can find our YouTube link, subscribe, it's free, and you'll be able to review this. But Melanie, you made some really great points around the co-employee piece. And being in the veteran community, ladies, you may be able to help a transitioning veteran get back on their feet by bringing them onto your organization. And a lot of times we think as a one person team, you know, hey, I can't afford anybody. But that credit is up to six grand, right, Melanie? Almost seven, I think. Six yeah, nine, um, there's a $9,600. So it's, it's a lot of money that can get back. And I think one of the most important pieces, especially when it comes to the WOTC credits, is that a lot of those questions around, um, you know, things that may qualify a person, those things aren't always on the, you know, application. Um, and they're not things that are a lot of times able to be asked in an interview. So having as a part of your onboarding process, once you've said, hey, yes, this person is someone that um, is you know, gonna come work for, for my company and they're doing their onboard paperwork, finding out then is so crucial because a lot of those things you, you don't know and you're not allowed to ask um, for privacy concerns. So really great way for you to collect some money from things that you, know, you may not have even known are there. Yeah, and I think it's definitely important. You made a point and you kept saying how ADP can help them. So in order for ADP to help you, they kind of got to be connected to you. So let me ask the proverbial question. Do they have to be a client um, to have that conversation with you? 
And can they have that conversation to say, hey, ADP might be right for me. Look at all these things they can do and all these ways they've helped me figure out how to save money. Absolutely. So you do not have to be a client to have the conversation. Um, we would love to have a conversation with any business owner, whether they're a client or not, just to talk about you know, what's going on and really have that consultation conversation to see what's there. And then from there, when it comes to the reporting piece, yes, once you're a client, all that reporting is synchronized and it makes it really easy um, to continue to get that money back and do that reporting on a consistent basis. But from a conversation and just seeing how we can help, we would love to have a conversation with any business owner. Absolutely. So I encourage you guys to get connected with Melody or Beth I mean, so many of you are doing R&D. So many of you are trying to create new things or improve things that are already out there. And you're spending this money and you're not getting it back. And then you're coming back and saying, I have no revenue because you put a lot of money into R&D and you're not recapturing it. Look, my background is OD, strategic planning. You have to strategize around your finances. You just can't wing it. It's not just about selling the products and then paying your bills, but you really need to come up with a strategy, a strategic plan around your finances. How are you going to maintain your money? How are you going to use that money when you hire people? Looking at your R&D opportunities, all of that should be strategized. You really have more opportunities than you know, but you're not taking advantage of them. And it's keeping you from reporting the kinds of revenue you want to. And that can impact anybody's confidence and make you think you don't have a great business because you're not using all the business tools. Beth, didn't you say over 4,000? Yes. So you can't fit in. <laughs> but unless you have that conversation, you won't know, right, Beth? That's right. That is absolutely right. If you don't ask, you don't know. So that's why these Managing Monday sessions are so important. We want to help you better manage your business. We want to help you find the right team members for your business. And not everybody is going to be someone you hire in-house. You're going to have your consultants, your accountants, your HR professionals, your attorneys. And these people won't be a part of your everyday team, but they're there to help you create a strategic plan that you will work the entire year to make your end result more productive. So this was super exciting. I got so much from this, even as a nonprofit. And I have to ask you, does any of this apply to nonprofits? I mean, can we get in on some of this? <laughs> we need you to, to just, just find something you can develop and then we can figure <laughs> that one out. <laughs> We're yes. always developing something. Can I use all my program time? We're always developing something. There you go. And so. <laughs> I mean, we have one young lady, she created a whole new kind of like training program and she uploaded it, you know, online. So this is a new package. She had to use a new software. It was something that they created. Now, I don't know how much money they put into that, but the bottom line is it is new or improved from what was already out there. And so I don't think we think outside the box enough and we always exclude ourselves without really asking the right questions. We say, oh, I don't qualify for that. Oh, that wouldn't work for me without really asking an expert like Melody or Beth, how can I take advantage of these opportunities? And as Beth said, it may be small in the beginning, but as you grow, the opportunity will grow. And, I, and who doesn't want their business to grow? So no one's planning on having a small itty bitty business forever. Everybody wants their business to grow and expand. So as you grow, you plan and you strategize to really use that money effectively. Are there any more tips you guys want to share? I don't know why this group is so quiet. I don't see anything in chat. Am I talking too much, you guys? Girl, you can just jump in now. You, you don't have to be quiet anymore. You can jump in now. This is our question and answer. But if you guys don't ask any questions, I'm going to ask some questions because I have a million of them. And I, I think another make... thing to like, for people just to realize is in general, most people went into business for whatever it was that they were passionate about, whether it was a service or a product or um, whatever it is, right? And a lot of the back office pieces get lost just because, you know, if you didn't go into business for, you know, HR or, you know, development or, 
um, project management and, you know, taxes and all of these different things. There are certain areas that may not be your specialty. And that's what we want to help with. We want to help. How can we alleviate those back end, you know, compliance or regulation or liability challenges, or even like we said, all of this money that you can get back that you may not be aware of. How can we help you with those back end things that usually aren't at the top of your to-do list because it may not be at the forefront of what you think your um, your skill set is, but how can we do that work in the background on your behalf to allow you to continue to really focus on what it is that you love, you're passionate about, and that you're you're really trying to grow for yourself and for the future? Yeah, when we talk about um, PPP, so many businesses weren't able to take advantage because they haven't been paying themselves. Yes. Just because you pay yourself doesn't mean you have to keep the money in your pocket. You could pay yourself a thousand dollars at the end of the month. And turn around and put that money right back in your business after you pay your taxes. So you're going to pay your taxes. You're going to pay all the things the government requires of you. And guess who's going to make sure all of that happens? That would be ADP. And then you turn around and the money that they put back into your bank account, you say, you know what? I don't need this money. In fact, I don't want this money. I want to keep investing in my business. And what do you do? You build your equity. You put it back into your business. And there is an absolute official tracking of what you just did and that wasn't yep. happening for a lot of businesses for ppp they couldn't prove that they had paid themselves or that they were doing payroll and that was so important absolutely that reporting piece is crucial the reporting and having those reports to say like hey this is what happened here's when it happened and how it happened is so crucial to being able to access a lot of these a lot of these funds so to Beth's point it may be a conversation of hey it looks like this could be something that you have now or it sounds like it could be something it's growing into maybe it's just us just helping you get on a better you know better system for you know reporting and tracking so that we can have a deeper discussion six months from now or a year from now and you've now put yourself in a better position for the future yeah, we tell them don't, a lot of tax people try to make you balance out so you didn't earn anything. That is the worst thing a business can do is not earn anything. You want to have revenues at the end of the year. You want to pay your taxes because those things are going to show that you have a viable business. So you want to show some revenues at the end of your time period, but you want to have good people on your team that understands how you can do what? Get those tax credits. So those revenues Stay where? With you. But if you don't know, <laughs> you're going to give all that money back away to the federal government. So you've got to get connected. You've got to continue to, to, to follow our sessions. So next month, we're doing a track and retain. And many of you don't even have employees. But guess what? They are within your reach. You just have to know the right strategy. And then in June, we're going to talk about the future of work. And work has changed. And it's going to be a great time mid-year with six months in to start looking forward to what are the things we need to do to position ourselves for the rest of the year and going into 2023. So I am so excited about everything that you guys are doing. This was an amazing session. I cannot tell our ladies more. I cannot tell them enough. You have to have a strategy. You cannot wing this and be successful. Um, that's a unicorn concept. And you don't want your business to be accidental. You want your business to be intentional. Every single piece of it is intentional. You planned it out. You've met with the right people. You know what you're trying to achieve. And you're checking it every month. Am I on track? If I'm not on track, what corrective actions do I need to put in place? I put them in place. Did they work? If they didn't work, reanalyze. There's nothing wrong with changing things. You keep changing it until you get the thing that works. There's nothing wrong with that. But you want to get to that place that works and you don't want to keep doing the same thing that's not working for you. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your time. And guess what? You're de-energizing yourself because you're not being successful. And so you're losing confidence just because you haven't put the right strategies in place. So we invite you to join us for a mentoring session. If you want to start building, I don't say your business plan. I hate that word. Your business strategy. Because you should be working this every single week. And then check our partners out at ADP. They have so many resources beyond the ones that we're talking about. There's so many resources that you as a business owner 
may be able to take advantage of without even becoming a client. But then why wouldn't you want to be a client? If someone can help you and support you the way you need to be supported, you want to get connected. So I'm not getting any money from ADP yet, <laughs> but we are partners and everybody should be partnering. And I encourage bartering and I encourage partner relationships where you guys work together and benefit each other. And we love our corporate partners because we're in it so that everybody can win. So we can win, so they can win. And most importantly, so you can win. So we're going to give you back the six minutes. Melody, Beth, you guys have any last minute tips for them? Anything you want to share about the upcoming sessions? Otherwise, I'm going to give them five minutes back on their clock. We're going to close out Managing Mondays as we kicked off April. Get to the calendar. Get connected. There's a lot going on. Anything, Melody? No, excited for May 2nd to talk about attracting and retaining talent. It's a big conversation as well. So looking forward to that one. I will see you guys in May. Anything, Beth? No, just keep in mind, guys. What was the what was the Tom Cruise and Renee Zellweger movie? Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> I just met Beth and I love her, man. I love her energy. And I love Beth. So Beth, come back. Even if you ain't part of the team, just come on back and say hi. <laughs> Thank us. you. So look here, ladies. So glad you joined us. If this went too fast for you or you need to hear it again, just so you can grasp it, this will be uploaded to our YouTube page. Subscribe again for free. Follow us on social media. It's Managing Monday. Next week is Technology Tuesday. I'm going to tell you like I always tell you, get connected. Thank you so much, ADP. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.